Hey everybody, welcome to Precision Machine Shed. I'm Brett. Today we're going to continue on repair our broken compound screw. And let's take a closer look at this guy. I was able to source a original handle and the little correct nut here. The guy that had this had this also. Here's a little pin that in uh, the retainer pin for this. As you can see here, this thing I think broke off quite some time ago. The actual screws, the threaded portion of the shaft is basically completely gone. There's just a little stub there. There should be another two, three hundred thousandths of thread on there. And then this area right here looks like they tried to use a wrench to grasp onto it and turn it. What I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to just clean this up and hopefully this handle will slip back over this. If that's the case, then we can do one of two things. We can go in here and we can drill this out, cut this off, drill this out, and press a new shaft in there and re-thread it, which, you know, if you want to keep this thing all original and use this nut, we could do that. The second option you could do is drill this out and just put a pan head or a cap head even, uh, a screw that will attach this handle and just screw into the inside of this shaft. Either way, there's not a ton of force on this handle. There shouldn't be anyways. Therefore, either method would probably work and work just fine for many, many years. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but first we'll clean this up and see if we can get this handle to fit on here. All right, so here is the little Sakai. Ah, dropping stuff. Sakai ML360, little mini lathe. I think this is like a 7x14 or something similar to that. So we're just going to... Chuck this guy in. This is a, this is a cool little lathe. It's got a little bison chuck on it. So it's, this is a Japanese-made lathe. That's a high-quality little machine. And all I want to do here is just barely touch that surface there and kind of clean up what I have. All right. So I'll just barely clean up the inside or the outside of this shaft here. Probably speed my speed my lathe up a little bit here. Check that. All right, so that's all it really needed. It didn't really need much. So it's a tiny bit loose, but that's okay. We basically, just cut a few high spots on this one side. So I'm going to leave it there, and we'll try and figure out what we're going to do next. So I have this guy set up in my adjustable buck true chuck, and I'm. Gonna, I think I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm just going to uh, face this off, just the threaded portion, and then I'm going to drill it with a number 16, which is 177 thousandths. And then we'll see where we're at. And then after that, I'm just going to get a plug. I might even go a little bit smaller than this, because I don't really need to, I don't necessarily need to go this big. All we're doing here is holding that nut on, and that I mean, most of the pressure of that handle is going to be taken up by this retaining pin in here. Shouldn't really ever be pulling out on much, so with the press fit inside of this shaft, and I'll probably might Loctite it too, uh, holding that little nut on I think is not going to be a big deal. So I might go a little bit smaller than this, but first thing I'll do is I'll face this off right up to uh, our shaft portion here where the handle fits over, and then I'll center drill it, and then I might go like a Maybe, we'll see here. I'll take a look at my drill bits and see what I'm going to do. Do my chuck to stay still. Probably too slow. Bump this up a little bit.
So the goal here is to take off as little as possible of my actual indexing part of the shaft here. So I'm going to switch over to a centering drill and we will center that out and we will drill a hole to try and get something to press fit our new threaded portion into. stock is a little bit. Alright. Give us a perfect little hole to drill out. And I'm going to stick with the number 17, 173 thousandths hole. Uh, I might bust out into this little keyway there but I'm gonna go deeper than that keyway and to do that I'm just gonna make a little mark I'm probably gonna go in twice as deep as that thing because I want that our pressed in shaft to actually stick in there and I don't want it coming out so I'm gonna grab a marker and make a mark about how deep I want to go like we're exactly perfect there but that's not going to matter because after we get our oversized shaft pushed in there we'll come back and turn it true to the screw diameter so as much as I would like it to be perfect it's not a big deal at this point if it's not perfect So that should be far enough to get us past our recess for our pin and should give us plenty of room to shove a new shaft in there so we can thread a new piece on there. And as expected, we did drill through our little um, spot there for a retaining pin, which I kind of expected was going to happen and that's probably the reason my drill bit went off center is because it hit that hole and it it uh, messed with it but that's fine we're gonna have to recut that anyways here in the future and that will probably help lock that pin in place anyways from twisting in the future all right so here's a little tip I just drilled this out with the number 17 as we can see here I got it stuck in there so if you want to check to see these are little holes and if you don't have pin gauges I can look this up if you don't have pin gauges here's a way to test your hole so you can see here, that's a little loose in there. That's the bit we just drilled out with, and that's to be expected. Here's a number 16. Here's 177 thousandths. That side of the drill bit will not go in. So we know we are somewhere between 173 and 177. And I'm going to say between 175 and 176 thousandths. So that gets us a couple thousandths pretty close to you know where we need to be. And without pin gauges, which I don't have a set of pin gauges right now, this will give us a very good idea of what we want to do. In this case, this is 177 thousandths, and I, can, I can't quite push it in there. So my press fit is going to be right around 177, 178, I think. And then this will get heated up and we'll press our new piece in. So I'm going to shoot for 177, maybe a hair over. And we should have a nice press fit in there. So I'm going to take this down 177 thousandths, which is quite a bit, so I'm going to go turn away and here we go.
So there's 178 thousandths. That's kind of where I want to be. I'm hoping that should be enough. Right on the money. Here we are. There's our piece that we're going to press in. Here's the little baby dake. Number zero zero two thousand pound one ton arbor press. So I'm gonna get my torch working here. Really? There we go. So it's gonna heat this guy up, warm her up a little bit, expand it. cooled down by now but there we go all right so we got our end pressed in there and I am fairly confident that that is never coming out as it pops out just kidding no that guy is stuck in there tight and that's perfect and with my stair at number 700 inside Mike's it reads exactly 314 thousandths so I will cut this down to 314. Another thousands or so. Alright. So it's pretty close. I'm just going to polish this a little bit. So that'll be perfect. Now we just gotta set our depth and turn our outside to our 1224 diameter. There. All right, so I have my little die holder here and I'm just gonna stick that in tailstock and run it in there and thread it. shot her a little bit, but that's fine. Well, we got this guy together, shoulders up nicely in the back, and we have a little recess on our shaft there. So this portion of the shaft is just below this recess in our handle. So when it tightens up, it gets snug on there. And then, of course, our little nut threads on there, just perfect. So two more things left to do. Shave this down so you can cut this. I'll probably cut it with a hacksaw and then I'll grind it. I usually like to grind these so they're fairly close uh, radius to the outside of this nut here. But I'm going to polish this nut first probably. Polish the handle. Not that the handle matters, but I'll polish this nut and clean it up. And then we'll cut this to our final length. And then the tricky part. It would probably just work as this. If it, I mean, if you tighten this down, it, you could theoretically use it like that, but not really when it's meant to function that way. And then the tricky part is going to be cutting our little recess here for our little pin. I'm going to see if I'm going to measure this. I think these are an eighth, eighth inch pin. My high tech caliper here. Yep, 126. So there, it's an eighth inch pin. So I should have an eighth inch uh, end mill. 
and theoretically half of it would be in there and half of it would be in here so I'm going to come in and um, ball mill that out so this will be quite a bit shorter so you have to cut into the threads a little bit and then right there and then that should give us enough space to get that detent in there and then get that working again All right, at this point I pretty much have it polished up to where I want it. We cut that end of that screw off and now I'm just going to carefully grind it down and, and blend that in so I don't end up snagging a finger or something on there. So let's grind that down. All right, so there it's fairly close. So I'm just going to take this all apart and grind down just the screw. All right, so there's polished just below flush. I took it on the deburring wheel and deburred it a little bit. So that's all finished. So now we have a semi-functional handle. Now of course the last step is to get our little pin in there. <clears throat> so I have my screw set up in here in my vise and I have a, a parallel underneath there just to get me up so it's fairly straight. This isn't a, this isn't a critical measurement but you want to get kind of as close as you can. So, And I'm just going to what I'm doing here is I got an eighth inch ball, ball mill, and I got it visually lined up. So if, I, if I'm within a thousandths or two, I'm going to be happy with this. And this is approximately where we need to be. I need to be a tad bit deeper than that. So I'm going to set my zero here. I don't have a micrometer on this thing. so, And I know from my previous ones that you end up just cutting into the thread just a tiny little bit. so. We're gonna go down, there's my zero from my previous spot there, and I'm just gonna go down just a tad bit more. So I'm just skimming the top of that thread, and I'm gonna end up cutting back into where my original slot was here. The reason for I don't want to put another cut into that shaft because although my new portion of my shaft is down in deep here I want to keep as much tension as I can there so we can try and reuse that and a lot of these handles can be crooked but after looking at this one the hole in there is fairly straight so the last one I did it was at an angle a little bit but this one's fairly straight so I'm just gonna mill straight across there and we'll see how close we get we can fudge it one way or the other a little bit, but we will cut a little bit here and see what we get. I'm gonna be... So I'm just barely hitting the bottom of that thread. I can still see the bottom of it, so now I'm gonna cut into this and... I don't want to break my mill here, so I'm not going very fast. My cutter. And then, so now we should be cleared from our original shaft, and I'm just going to cut the bottom of this new section here. I need to go 200,000, so that brings me about halfway into where I'm at here. That should be pretty close. So the bad thing about this is that in order to test it, I got to take it out of here. But let's take a look and see. I'm fairly confident that that's going to work, so I'm going to take it out and we'll test it. All right, after finagling with it for a few seconds here, I did get the pin in there. So as you can see, our indexing pin is in there, and I got it pushed in there a little bit. Let's see if we can push it in there a little further. I'm gonna get a smaller drift here. And I'm dang near all the way down there, so let's try and put our screw in. And 
and I don't have the correct <laughs> tool here, so don't don't give me too much crap here. But there we go. Look at that on there, nice and tight. Our screw there is below flush where I want it. So now when you feel across here, I've done some of these where I've gotten them so sharp across here, like a nice straight that these will cut your hand if you nick them. So I kind of buff them out a little bit. But there we go. I mean, that thing's solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, and I think that's going to be it. Let's put it back together here. Nice and smooth. All right, well there we go. We got basically a functioning saddle again, minus my little handle. I gotta put a new little hand crank here, but I found this part uh, from another guy on Facebook along with a nut, and so now my compound is functional again. Look at that, here we go, good deal.